Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today, uh, I'm working on a customer's axe. He brought it back for me. Um, I made this in spring for Jim Baird and uh, he's taken on a few adventures and uh, we're collaborating a little bit um, to develop the axe and uh, the leather work as well. Um, the one thing he wants to change is he wants a longer handle. Jim's a pretty tall guy and uh, this handle at 24 inches is on the lower end of what a traditional Hudson's Bay axe would have come with. Uh, on the upper end, traditionally, from what I can find, is 28 inches. Um, we're going to go 30 inches for Jim. Um, he could probably even do with a longer handle than that, but we also have to consider that he's going to take it in the canoe with him on these big trips. Um, the other thing is the leather work he likes, um, but he's worried that these snaps here, um, especially if the leather becomes wet, sloshing around the bottom of the canoe, this could come off. And if you follow Jim, you know he's had uh, had an incident in the past where he cut himself on an axe that he had strapped to his backpack. So um, we're going to make a change here as well. I think we're going to add a buckle and a strap. It's just sort of to complement what we've got going on here. And uh, yeah, we're also going to take the axe reprofile a little bit, take a little bit of weight out of it. Um, so for those of you who follow along on my Instagram, or if you've been on my website, you know I actually sell three sizes of a Hudson's Bay Axe. Courier de Bois, which is what's Jim's, Scout, and then the Trapper. So those are the three sizes that I make. And these are just the templates to show the profile. They're all based off of a historical axe. Um, This guy right here. So this axe was found on the shore of Lake Abitibi. And uh, another one of my Instagram followers reached out to me and um, was interested in a tomahawk. And we got talking about some of his old axes he had. He sent some pictures and he gave me this axe and a um, Biscayne axe, which was the predecessor to the, to the Hudson Spay. So this Hudson Spay axe probably dates late 1800s. And you can see there's not much of it left. <laughs> um, the profile probably came in between these two somewhere, I'm guessing, maybe seven inches long. And uh, there would have been a steel bit welded in here. There's really no steel left, maybe a little hint of it there, but uh, certainly this ax is never gonna be hung and used again. But for me, a great reference tool um, to base my profiles on to make sure that they were um, correct um, and also just to study how the original axe was made this was a originally made by folding the axe around and you can actually see flow lines in the wrought iron here that show that this was folded forge welded and then a steel bit welded inside and uh, sorry right here so this is uh, me playing around with that concept a little bit to see what uh, what's involved and, and how to replicate. So this was uh, my first attempt at it and it went pretty well. Um, the forge weld I ground away here to see and it looks like it didn't quite take. This is mild steel of course and not wrought iron. And um, I also would like a little bit more material in the pole area. I could forge weld a piece of steel on the back of this as well. Uh, but I think what I'll do is jump up the material in the middle here and get a little more mass for the pole in the next attempt. Um, anyways, I digress. Jim's axe is here for a little bit of a tune-up, a new handle, fix the leather work, and take a little bit of weight out of the head. So the Courier de Bois, 2.7 pounds. This guy, 2 pounds, which is more traditional um, weight. But this profile is a little bit smaller than the original. So the original is a little bit longer in the eye area and so what I'm doing is I'm going to take Jim's axe and I'm going to reduce the material from the bit and reduce the material from the pole there it had quite a bit and um, get it more in line with the two pound axe maybe not quite there it is quite a heavy axe to begin with but we're going to reduce it a little bit reprofile the edge for cutting and splitting um, fix the leather work with a strap and put it in a longer handle 
Yeah, one more thing, guys. Stick around to the end here and uh, you can catch uh, a little bit of interaction with me and Jim when he comes to pick this guy up when it's done. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully he likes it. All right. Hey guys, a couple tips on uh, handles if you're making your own. Uh, this is just my ideas and uh, stuff I picked up. So um, you'll notice that old handles have a taper here. And the reason for that is so that when you're hammering the handle on, you don't break off your palm swell area. And uh, a lot of guys will cut that off afterwards. Um, the older makers used to leave them on. The other uh, is when you're fitting the head, you can see here I have started and I'm getting some bearing surface here all the way, and it's quite high. It's not just a ledge. It's not just a sharp line all the way around, uh, especially on Hudson's Bay Axe where the profile, the height is not that high. The bearing surface is not as much as say a felling axe, which could be up to a third or even half again. Um, 
it's important that you get a lot of bearing surface so that the accent doesn't come loose. And um, the final thing I'll say is that if you put the axe head on and put a straight edge along the edge of the axe, it shouldn't contact anywhere on the handle here because when you're splitting wood, you don't want that split wood to come up and rub down the handle. So in my case, uh, I will I will leave, you know, as much as possible here to make it strong, but uh, make sure that it clears. That's it. Good to test them, guys, before you finish the handles. Make sure they don't come loose. And then, uh, yeah, we'll give this a final scrape and a little bit of linseed oil and call it a day. And we'll move on to leather work. Give this a final grind. You can just see the burr. You know you're right there when you get that little burr. Hey, Jim. I got something to axe of you. <laughs> Are you still rolling? Yeah. All right. How's the axe looking? I got something for you. Wow, look at that. So we gave it a tune-up. Tell me what you think. So how long is this handle? 30. 30 inches? Yeah. And, uh, and you look, lightened up the bit a bit too, eh, or the, the yeah, head? Yeah, we reprofiled it a little bit, um, yeah. more in line with the... I love this, uh, like, the sheath itself, eh? Look at that, though, eh? Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? With this, and it's still light enough to carry 
on a canoe trip, right? Like essentially, it's almost like a hatchet head with an axe handle almost. Right. Yep. Sort of. Yeah. Jack of all trades. Yeah, but then now that it's, this this bit's a little shorter too, I feel like I can like kind of do like you know choke up on it to do like some finer working and stuff like that. So here we go. I just picked up uh, this axe from Chris. Now I had an, uh, one of Chris's axes, but he did a little work on it to customize it for my specific uses. Um, you know, you can have a hundred different axes, and each one might be a little better at something than the other. Um, so this one for my size and my usage purposes is just about perfectly custom. And I think uh, this is probably the most beautiful axe I've, I've ever held in my life, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, when, yeah, easily. Look at this thing. <laughs> Look, it's nice and sharp too, eh? We should give it a try. Yeah, so I'm going to be taking this um, on my uh, Trans-Labrador Highway overlanding adventure and... Uh, backcountry camping in Newfoundland and on a moose hunt in Newfoundland as well which I'm leaving for at the end of this week so um, definitely key you're never gonna find anything like this in the store so yeah I'm super excited about this if you can't tell yeah <laughs> right, let's try this puppy out <sighs> Oh yeah, a few knots in her. No match. No match, baby. Look at that. Get him down nice and small. Wow, that, oh man, you can just do some damage with this sucker. Let's, try this. let's get another one. Let's that, let's maple. Maple. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. As you can see, I can be a little bit rough on my uh, axes. Yeah, I'm liking this. Yeah, and that longer handle, like the head speed you get out of this. Oh, I've broken it, just kidding. <laughs> Look. I made you a new one because the other one had marks on it. I guess I shouldn't have bothered. Oh, that's just from that's just on the leather. That's why you have the leather. You know, one of the things that you like to do with an axe is uh, when you hit it, and and the axe doesn't go all the way through. Instead of pulling the axe out, or instead of keeping chopping it like this with the round connected to the axe, the best thing to do, flip it over like this. Boom! Hit it on the butt of the axe, and that way the weight of the round will just fall on top of the bit and split it. It's the same thing when you're putting an axe, uh, a hammer handle back on or an axe head back on. If your axe head falls off. You don't go like this. You go like this and bump it like this, right? So it's the same kind of principle. But to do that, you know, it's good to have uh, um, some protection on the top of your axe so that over time you can damage the axe handle if you're constantly flipping it upside down and beating it like that. But as you can see, this axe just made real quick work of that uh, well, I even got a little excited and started chopping up Chris's logs that he has to make a log cabin. So, sorry, Chris. But, uh, yeah, like you can see, so for an axe with a head as light as this, um, because you have a bit of a longer handle, you really get a good head speed and you wind up being able to have something that's not a heck of a lot heavier than a, a hatchet head, but that does the job of a full-size axe and that you can is also light enough to take on canoe trips. Um, I also like this... Uh, the palm swell on it here. Um, that's something you're never gonna see on commercially made axes because um, it's more specialized because you know when you're actually in the bush, when you're out camping, your hands can be wet or in the winter, maybe you're wearing gloves, maybe there's a little ice on your gloves and you're much more likely to slip, the axe can fly out of your hand and you know, accidents can happen. So just having that there, that extra wide thing feels really good and it just feels like I have better control and it's safer. Um, so yeah, all around super, super, excited this handle is this is a hudson bay axe which is what the voyageurs carried and what the hudson bay company traded for uh, the, at their post for for many years um, traditionally it would have a little bit shorter handle than this which is what i had i wanted a traditional one but then i realized nobody was six foot five back in the fur trade era so for my size i needed something a little bigger and just like but guys have you ever seen anything that beautiful before look at that Sharp too.